You're in the way. Hmm? Welcome to Biotrack Sailing from near Peterborough, Ontario. We're sitting in the dog seat, so she might jump up and down. And today we're going to talk about electrical systems, and I'm going to ask Pierre some questions, and he's going to tell you about the electrical systems on Biotrack. This is our 18th boat, so <laughs> we've had all of these different vessels, some of them new, some of them uh, used to uh, rebuild computer electrical systems. And I'd like to mention that Pierre was an Olympic class tornado sailor. And when we came back from around the world, we bought a used tornado, but it was a bit too wet and wild for me. You're Miss Pierre, you're Mr. Fix It on the boat. But basically anything that needs fixing, you take that as a challenge and you love doing it, with perhaps the exception of toilets. So how have you learned so much about boat systems? My dream for a long time was always to do long distance uh, cruising, reach exotic destinations and try to be <clears throat> as independent as possible. And uh, as I quickly learned, even from the small boat, you have to know your boat very well, uh, all aspects of it, because there won't necessarily be somebody around to be able to help you if you break something. That's why it pays one or the other to learn how to uh, fix most, most system on the boat. You don't have to do everything. Absolutely not. I would you know, recommend specializing on one area that you like, whether it's plumbing or electrics or electronics and whatever, and became good, become good at it because then it becomes a trading a tools with other cruisers where you say, fine, you know, if you can help me with this, I'll help you with that. So that also works very well. But uh, that's, that more or less ex explains it. And how has your career as a pilot helped you as a cruiser, aside from the obvious of navigation? Well, I always tell everyone, because I get the question about retirements from as a pilot uh, very often, and my answer is always the same. Uh, for me, they're both the same. You know, whether you uh, sail a boat between A and B or you fly an aircraft between A and B, you know, the, 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 uh, the, the differences are so small. Uh, you know, one you worry about altitude, the one you worry about death, you know, and that's about it. Everything else is the same. You still have to think about in terms of uh, systems, you have to think in terms of navigation, in, in terms of autonomy, uh, in terms of performance, uh, weather, uh, the quickest way to get there, which is like a big chess game. So uh, routing, which is also done in aircraft, just like it is in boats. So uh, the similarities are endless. As, as, uh, as, a, as a pilot, you're expected to know your aircraft very well inside out. You don't have to go out to the toolbox, but you certainly should know about, uh, about the, in quite good details about the different systems in the aircraft so that if something happens uh, <clears throat> and it's not covered very in very detailed in the book, you know, you can cope with it. All of this, of course, leading to the fact that you shall always have at least one level of redundancy to in critical systems. But uh, the redundancy is very important on a boat, just as in the aircraft, the same thing. You know, nobody would think about crossing the Atlantic with only one engine uh, with a commercial aircraft carrying hard and some passengers or current passengers. So uh, the same logic uh, would apply to, to boats to a certain extent, where if you're crossing the Atlantic, uh, you don't want to be in a position where you only have one autopilot and it fails one day out uh, and then you have to you know <laughs> circle between yourself and and the crew to you know to do two hours or three hours or four hours watches uh, holding the helm all of that time where there's absolutely no reference point where you can look at except the compass so it becomes very very tedious first and second it becomes very quickly detrimental to the boat speed performance of the vessel simply because an, an autopilot over several hours is able to do a much much better job than a human being that gets distracted after a few minutes so, so coming back to our boat we have lots of different systems feeding into the batteries and we've already done a video on shore power and the importance of having the ground being on the boat rather than carrying the ground from the shore on the boat so we're not going to go over that but let's just talk about the systems that feed into our batteries. And well, yes, the, the, the battery that we just covered are what is in yellow in the diagram here. So you've got the battery bank on the right, which is a 25 kilowatt hour uh, of cells at 24 volts. That weighs 132 kilos. That, so that's what we're using on, on Biotrek. And the reason was very simple. Our daily loads are about 15 kilowatt. And that 25 kilowatt hour allows us to run air conditioning. 
in the vessel if we need it for a fortnight, if the conditions are a foot anchor or in a marina and we can't get electrics. So it gives some flexibility. So if you look in the first blue box there, one which is powered directly by the BMX, which will, which is that square-ish uh, yellow box there in the middle, which, as I said, is bi-directional with the battery because it's reading from the battery, but it's also sending commands back to the battery as, as uh, far as balancing it between the cells and, and these different things. <clears throat> as I said, the BMS has the authority to open and close the contactor, even though we can do it uh, with the CAN bus commands. And this powers directly the 24-volt bus of the boat which is, you know, which is very self-explanatory, just like any other boat. And then on that list there, the fourth item from the bottom on the left, you'll see one called PLC, that's Programmable Logic, uh, you know, a computer. And this is what we, uh, that sends the command to the chargers, to the inverters, to uh, the engines, to the insulation transformers, into changing the limits to, to depending on what we want. If we are, for example, changing the frequency of the boat from 50 to 60 hertz if we uh, need to, if we want to. Another example is if we are at shore and the shore power is only able to uh, to give us 30 amps, well, we can dial 30 amps in there and the system will never ask for more than 30 amps from shore. Uh, so we're not so we're not always having the, the breaker on shore go like sometimes could be a problem if you're not yes. controlling it. No, no, absolutely. And also allows us to change the set voltage of the battery. If we're going to be at the dock for several weeks, there's no reason to fully charge the batteries. So we'll set the voltage of the battery back, you know, uh, you know, to 22, 23 volts instead of 25. Just like you would on a Tesla, where you can drag up the amount you want to charge your batteries. Like if we're going to go on a road trip, we'll fully load them. Yeah, very and right. normally yeah. we're only keeping them at 80 percent. Yeah, very, very similar to to what uh, is available on a Tesla. I said mo most of these things that we're speaking about already well, well. Uh, acknowledged, understood, and implemented by the automotive industry. So this is nothing new here. We're just recommending to manufacturers to follow the safety measures of the automotive industry a little bit closer. And then if we go back further to the left there, we'll see that the battery, which also has a bidirectional uh, arrow, battery BMS feeds back into the three com AC combis which in this case, since Ultramare was only purchasing a master volt equipment or recommending the installation of master volt equipment, uh, we decided for the sake of simplicity, just to purchase as much of the master volt system as possible, just so that makes it simpler, simpler for them to, to, uh, to understand the boat and maintain it if, uh, if required. So, uh, so that's why here we, we, all everything that is in green was provided by by Ultramare and directly from Mastervolt. So these three combis can have several inputs. You know, on the left side we have inputs from the shore, or inputs from the generator, and uh, or you could also feed a solar panel in there if you wanted to. So they're quite versatile. And on the DC side of things, they're getting input also from the BMS, you know, box where the, uh, the high power comes in. And this is used in combination to feed the rest of the vessel for the 240 volts load and by default, the 240 to 120 volt transformer for the, the North American vessels. And when we got the boat, there were only two um, inverters or combis as they're called on the, on the diagram. Um, you had wanted three originally, and now we have three. So the two were because Utremer didn't think there was enough space, but I have a nice little video showing how you made space. There you go. <laughs> Pierre. Okay, Pierre, got another project going. Tell me what you're doing. Well, this one has been on my list of things to do for since we left the med. There are certain cases where if we draw a lot of power uh, continuously, like if for some reason the air conditionings are going into heat mode or cold mode, uh, the induction plate going. I think the real so, problem is when we have guests. It's you and I alone, it's not been a problem. So there are times when we do need a little bit more than the 3.5, 3.5, which is 7 kilowatt continuous of these two. Uh, inverters, uh, combo inverters. I really like those machines. They're, they're well built and they will add whatever shore power or generator plus the output of this up to 70 amps per system. Uh, technically we just want to use the shore power to charge the batteries but there's a pass through a feed through and same thing again. At one point we're limited by the output of these two inverters plus maybe a little bit of shore power if it's weak. So um, 
anyway, on my list of things to do was to increase it by one. And I happen to have a spare one. <laughs> so I'll just install it. So it's uh, stored in the boat. So I'll just move uh, this uh, 240 to 120 transfo, which is the one providing the 120 for the boat. And then I'll move this guy over to the right, move this uh, combination charger, which is the one we use if the dock is only 120 volts. So I'll move it down and then I'll move uh, the transformer, the 240 to 220, 220 volt transformer on this wall. And then I'll move this one over there and I'll put the new one in here. And so that'll give us three of those. I think that's a lot of moving work since they're so heavy. I don't <laughs> yeah. really want to lift them. <laughs> I'm not asking you to. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. No, it's, 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 it's uh, physically difficult, but uh, manageable. Because that also increases the charging rate when we are running the generator. So, is and, that a good uh, reason? No, absolutely. Because I don't think the, the power is needed. We, we have two, well, we're 1,000 amps and 25 volts. So 10, 25 kilowatt hour of storage, lithium storage. And it's, and it's a beautiful battery. We are allowed to um, maintain 600 amp continuous out or in. And uh, basically, when we run the generator, we want to run it as soon as possible. And this is another issue with the marine system. Uh, we cannot run these at continuous duty. They just can't. Uh, they just generate too much heat and they're not water cooled, which you see in the automotive world. So that's why we have to provide ventilation first. And the second, we just can't, you know, same thing for the charging. We can't keep them at 100 amps, even though they're able to charge 100 amps. You can't keep them at 100 amps forever. They'll just heat up. So, uh, so I find the sweet point for those is between 80 and 90 amps continuous, but 80 amp continuous is the best. So by adding the third one, three of them at 80 amps will give me 240 volts, uh, uh, 240 amps of charging in 25, uh, 25 volts, which is uh, perfect because that will really load up my generator to, uh, to 80% load, which is also the sweet point for the generator. And I don't know if you ever saw that, but that's where I installed it. There is a, a fan up there which is controlled by the temperature sensor in those and it comes up it's a 24 volt plant fan which i'm running at 12 volts simply because it's too noisy at 24 volts and it used to be bolted to the wall and now i have it just suspended so i don't we don't get the vibration so it's actually very uh, very quiet now where it was very noisy when we got the boat it's, it, this is just fine tuning but can't you find a better place and just not move anything not really because you want to keep the wire runs as short as possible and well, you want the about, electronics in the dry place, of course. And you want the place where there is some ventilation. Oh so... So what do you have to do? Well, I have the 25 volts of the battery going into the charger. So these are the big 95 millimeters or, you know, forward cable going from the battery distribution bar to uh, each one of those inverters. So I just have to one, have, add one set, which I have here. Then uh, there is a second input, which is the shore power. There's a third input, which is the generator power. Of course, there are smaller wires, but still carrying 50 amps continuous requires a good gauge, which is this size. And then, and then on the output, I uh, yeah, only using one AC output, but still it can go up to 70 amps. What about the solar panels? Where do they feed to? Right here. Oh, okay. So the solar panels, which I said is 80 volts uh, out because I put them all in series to be more efficient, diminish the losses. The 80 volts of the solar panels are going into this box and this goes connected directly to the battery. Very simple. Oh, okay. If, uh, if viewers, of course, have a specific question, I'd be very happy to, uh, to answer them. So leave the questions in the comments below. And if you like the technical videos, let us know um, and give us a thumbs up. We'll be back to sailing videos in the spring, but for the winter, more technical videos to come. And I'm also gonna do a series on what it takes to prepare to go around the world.